Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette and our bow tie guide. We discuss the history of bow ties, the different styles, the different options, how you wear one, what you have to pay attention to, and anything else you ever wanted to know about bow ties. <laughs> Bow ties today are worn by people from all walks of life. Even famous people in the past have worn them, such as actors Fred Astaire or Marlene Dietrich, politicians like Winston Churchill, architects like Le Corbusier, scientists like Bill Nye, and lots of other people. In my experience, many men avoid bow ties because they don't think they can pull one off, they don't know how to tie one, or they think they don't have the occasion to wear one. The truth is, every man can pull up a bow tie and wear it well especially if you like classic style. Today, I wear bow ties about 30% of the time and has become an integral part of my wardrobe. Once you know how to tie them, there are many occasions you can wear them at. Hipsters wear them with just a regular shirt for everyday wear, and it doesn't have to be an evening occasion. That's very formal. And you're not sure how to tie a bow tie? Please check out this video here. It has over a million views and has helped many, many men tying a bow tie. Honestly, the video has worked for everyone I've ever talked to, except my friend Matt Sizdak, and he lives close enough to me so I can help him when he needs it. Also, if you know the basic way to tie a bow tie, please check out the video about our advanced styles so you can really refine the look of your bow tie. All right, now let's talk about the history of the bow tie. Basically, it's one of the oldest form of neckwear in menswear. The bow tie shares a history with the necktie in a sense that it originates from a different piece of neckwear known as the cravat. The first group of men known to decorate their neck with a piece of fabric were Croatian mercenaries in the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century. It became known as the cravat, which is the French term for Croatian. Cravats were usually worn loosely tied in elaborate fashions and sometimes it took hours to get the look right. The first bow tie that looked somewhat similar to what we know it to be today came up in the 1830s. In the following 30 years, bow ties became progressively more prominent, and by the 1860s, the traditional cravat has fallen mostly out of favor. There's a famous photograph of Abraham Lincoln from 1863 showing the bow tie style in transition. Lincoln is stoically staring ahead while wearing a black bow tie with pointed ends. On the other hand, his predecessor, James Buchanan, wore still a white cravat. Between 1850 and the turn of the century, bow ties dominated menswear, and you could see them mostly in black or white or variations thereof. At the beginning of the 20th century, bow ties transitioned more into a specific style choice because the traditional threefold necktie became more popular now. Even though they would be progressively less popular now, they still maintained their place in a classic men's wardrobe in the first half of the 20th century. At the turn of the century, bow ties were usually quite small, but frankly, there were loads of shapes and forms, much more than you can find today. By 1910, the bow tie had grown a little bit across the board, but again, there were lots of choices out there. In the 30s, you'd often see smaller bow ties as well, and bigger bow ties. Generally, they weren't quite as slim as later in the 50s or 60s. However, in the late 60s and early 70s, bow ties became huge and are probably the biggest you've ever seen. It was the same with ties and shirt collars, sometimes also lapels. By the 1990s and early 2000s, most men would not wear bow ties anymore, and it was only something reserved for people who made a deliberate style choice and who wore bow ties because other men didn't. I would guess that the overall market share of bow ties at that time was about 5 to 10 percent. Thankfully, bow ties today are not nearly as subjected to trends, and they've become much more mainstream and popular. I would estimate the market share today to be anywhere between 30 and 40 percent. It seems to me that bow ties are much more flexible than they were in the past. People wear them sometimes even with short sleeved shirts or just a dress shirt. It doesn't require a jacket anymore, and it's just a form of self expression. Despite this gain in popularity, there are still some stereotypes that people have towards wearers with bow ties. Sometimes people think bow ties are just for nerds or worn by conservatives, eccentrics, or older men. In my experience, Confident men that are stylish wear bow ties simply because they like them and that's a way for them to express themselves. That aside, it's much more comfortable to wear in the summer because it keeps your chest a lot cooler than any kind of necktie would. On top of that, it's very difficult to stain your bow tie with foods 
whereas with a tie, it's very easy to do so. Of course, it has always been a staple in the prep culture and for Ivy style. So what different types of bow ties can you get? Basically, there are three main categories. First, there are the pre-tied bow ties that are probably the largest share in the market. Sometimes they also come in a clip-on version and they're really popular with men who simply don't know how to tie a bow tie and men who don't usually wear one. There's a simple rule. If you want to be stylish, never wear a pre-tied bow tie because it always shows. Typically, they're made of cheaper, less expensive, oftentimes more shiny fabrics, and they're very symmetrical, and it screams, my bow tie was pre-tied. Wearing a pre-tied bow tie makes you look like a 16-year-old attending prom, and frankly, we believe they shouldn't wear them either. The second option is the self-tie bow tie, and as the name implies, you tie it yourself every time. Though it seems daunting, it's the only choice for an elegant gentleman, and sometimes you can even find self-tie bow ties that have a little clip-on mechanism that allows you to remove it, so once you tie it once, you don't have to tie it again. Personally, I think that's not the way to do it, because changing the look of your bow tie every time gives your outfit a different air, and sometimes you can decide to have a smaller bow tie, other times a bigger one, depending on your mood. Among the self-tie bow ties, there are two subcategories. For one, there is the adjustable bow tie, which is by far the most popular version. Usually you find them for all kind of day wear bow ties, and the great advantage is that you can simply adjust the size, so sometimes you can have a smaller tie, other times a bigger tie, and you can even lend it to your father, to your brother or friend if they need one, and it'll work for them. There are all kinds of adjustment mechanisms. Some include metal clips, others have buttons. I have all of them, and in my experience, they all work. The other subcategory is a fixed length self-tie bow tie. So first of all, why would you want to limit yourself to just one size? Basically, for evening wear, when you wear wing collars, the entire bow tie is visible and having a little adjustment mechanism just looks weird and odd. So what about wearing a tuxedo shirt with a turned down collar? Well, basically, at the end of the evening, it's very typical practice to untie the bow tie, and when it dangles there, you can still see the adjuster. And because of that, it's always advisable to go with a fixed length neck size for evening bow ties. Because I could never find a nice assortment of evening bow ties with fixed neck sizes, I simply designed them, and you can find all of them in our shop. We even created a video on how to find the right black evening bow tie for yourself. Check it out here. The third category of bow ties are fashion-forward modern bow ties. For example, with the gain in popularity in recent years, we've seen wooden bow ties, we've seen bow ties made out of bird feathers, as well as leather bow ties. They're actually not tied, they're simply like a clip-on bow tie that just have the shape of a traditional bow tie. Most of the time, these items are very flashy, and I believe it's a fad that won't stand the test of time. Of course, if you literally want to look like a peacock, you can go with them. Otherwise, I suggest you stay with traditional self-tie bow ties. So what about the different styles and shapes of bow ties? Basically, the sky is a limit, and if you look at old men's fashion magazines and books, you'll see there were hundreds of different shapes around on the market. Today, it basically boils down to five basic shapes and styles. The first one is the butterfly shape, which is called that way because it resembles a butterfly. It works well with the form of the chin, and because of that, it's very popular. It's a style I really like for evening bow ties, and the butterfly shape we offer comes in different sizes, so please check it out in our shop here. It's designed in a way that the knot is relatively small, and you have beautiful wings, just like with a butterfly. Also, while cheaper bow ties curve at the outer edge of the bow tie, a butterfly bow tie will remain straight edges. If you want your butterfly bow tie to stand the test of time, avoid the extremes, don't go too big, don't go too small, and go something with middle of the road. Of course, if you have a smaller head, a smaller bow tie is much more appropriate for you, and vice versa. The next popular style is the batwing bow tie, which is basically a rectangular that gets slimmer around the neckband, but it makes for a bigger knot. Because of that, it can be harder to tie, and in my opinion, it sometimes looks a bit boring, but ultimately, it's a very personal choice. The third style of bow tie contains pointed ends. It's like a little diamond, and it has the advantage that it looks slightly different every time, and depending on how much you pull it out on either end, the look will be different. In any case, 
it will always be asymmetrical because the pointed end is in the front on one side and in the back on the other side. Overall, it's a great option for day wear because it creates some form of casualness that's a little more relaxed, all the while being relatively formal. In my experience, it flatters most face shapes, and because of that, it's a very versatile option. The fourth kind of bow ties are very difficult to find today, and they're asymmetrical bow ties, meaning that the ends of the bow tie are not symmetrical, either top to bottom or left side to right side. It may look really odd when a bow tie is untied, but once you tie it, it creates that desired effect that it's something is slightly askew, not 100% symmetrical and polished. And in my experience, it's something really people are attracted to who already have lots of regular bow ties in their closet and who simply want to change the look a little bit or maybe even impress their other close horse friends. The fifth style of bow tie is a single end bow tie. And it's called that way because it has that bow tie shape only on one end. Once you tie it, it looks very similar to a regular bow tie with the exception that it's cleaner and crisper because there's simply just one layer of fabric. This style was popular for a short period in the 1930s, especially for evening wear. And to my knowledge, we're the only place who offers those kind of bow ties online. So for selection, head over here now. And of course, if you wanna learn how to tie it, we did so in our advanced bow tie guide tutorial. So when you wear a bow tie, keep in mind that it already makes a louder statement than wearing a regular necktie or no necktie at all. And because of that, we suggest not to go overboard with super bright pink colors, lobster patterns, or maybe even patchwork bow ties with madras, seersucker, and other fabrics, because it's simply over the top. In terms of bow tie materials, it's pretty much as varied as it is with ties. Silk is probably the most popular and widespread material, and it comes in all kinds of shapes and weaves. It comes in shiny silk, not so shiny silk, coarser silk, silks with natural knobs in them, and it's just a wonderful material for bow ties. However, you can also find linen bow ties, cotton bow ties, blended bow ties, as well as wool bow ties. Personally, I'd say clear of nylon or polyester bow tie because it's just a lower end, cheaper product that won't look as nice. Another really great option for bow ties is velvet because it changes the look with the light and it can look very debonair, especially with a dinner jacket. One thing to keep in mind with bow ties is that a very fine weave that is tighter is always better because men usually grow facial hair and the bow tie is much closer to your hair, thus picking on the fabric. And if the weave is too loose, let's say in the form of a grenadine, you're much more likely to pull threads from your bow tie. And even if you have a tighter woven silk, it's normal to pull out some threads, but you can get rid of those either with a very fine pair of scissors or with a cuticle clipper, for example. In terms of bow tie sizing, you don't have to worry about it if you get an adjustable bow tie. If you get a fixed size bow tie, I suggest to measure your neck because sometimes your shirt says it's a size 15 when in fact it measures 16 inches or it can say 39 centimeters and it's in fact 41 centimeters. And that will throw up the proportions if you get the bow tie. So when and how should you wear a bow tie? Basically, the sky's the limit. You can wear it for your formal events, for weddings or garden parties, black tie or white tie events. And to learn more, please check out the video on how to pull off the bow tie. In my experience, there are four tips I would tell anyone who's considering wearing a bow tie. The first is always practice tying your bow tie just so you understand how it works, even in a stressful situation, because I can't tell you how many grooms have contacted us the day off trying to understand how to tie their bow tie. Fortunately, we had the video that we could refer them to, but it's always a very stressful situation. So practice it when you have the time. When you're just starting out, keep it simple. Use classic patterns, such as small micro patterns or Macclesfield needs. Maybe avoid the super loud Paisleys and just work yourself up to that. Also, buy moderately sized bow ties because you can wear them now or 10 years from now and that will never go out of style. Four, I think a bow tie looks better when worn with a jacket. Otherwise, it reminds me more of the little flower boys at weddings who wear their little dress shirts with the bow ties. Of course, ultimately, the choice is entirely up to you. So how many bow ties should you own? Of course, the answer is it depends. Personally, I've probably around 100 or even more. Other people 
get away with just three or four. A general person who's interested in classic men's clothing should probably invest in about 11 of them. And which ones those are, you can find out in this video here. If you're just starting out wearing bow ties, I suggest you invest in a simple black bow tie that you can wear for evening events, go with silk. And to learn which one is right for you, check out this video here. The second bow tie would be a classic business bow tie, maybe in blue or in red with a smaller micro pattern that is very easy to combine with lots of items in your wardrobe. The third bow tie would be a slightly more brighter color that you can wear in summer, maybe even with seersucker, and it's just more of a summery feel. The fourth bow tie would be a fall bow tie. I suggest you get this one in the wool shelly simply because it's a great fabric for the fall winter season. It comes in more subdued colors. It's a little crisper. It doesn't wrinkle as much and it doesn't have any shine. So what makes Fort Belvedere ties more special than others? Basically, we source very high-end fabrics from small weavers exclusively in England and in Italy. It's not something you can find at department stores or at places that sell bow ties for 20 bucks because the fabric for a bow tie already costs more than that. We also strive to use the proper interlining for a bow tie so it ties very easily. On top of that, we offer our bow ties in different shapes and different sizes, and we have an extensive selection of evening bow ties for black tie and white tie that is unparalleled, and you won't find a better selection elsewhere. All of our bow ties are self-tie, the day ones are adjustable, the evening ones are fixed neck sizes, and of course, we also offer single end bow ties, which you can't find elsewhere. So in today's video, I'm wearing a classic light blue striped business shirt with a Macclesfield Needs bow tie. It's a smaller micro pattern with a buff background, which is a mix between yellow and beige. I combine it with a pastel yellow pocket square with hand rolled edges with an X stitch. It picks up the colors, yet it doesn't have the pattern. It both stands out on the light blue shirt as well as the navy blazer jacket, which has a faint window pane and is part of a suit. My pants are light blue flat front chinos. I'm combining them with a pair of full brooks in a dark chocolate brown. The shoelaces are somewhat contrasting in a reddish brown, and you can find them from Fort Belvedere in our shop here. The same is true for my socks, which are shadow striped in light gray and blue that pick up the color of my pants. Of course, you can find the pocket square and the bow tie in our shop as well. And the ring I'm wearing is a lapis lazuli stone with sterling silver, and the sterling silver goes well with my belt buckle, and the belt itself matches and coordinates the color with my shoes.